Everyone, what is up? Today's day 27 of the Zero to Start in 30 Day Challenge. And today we're gonna go over how to add the Shopify Buy button to our website. So I mentioned a little bit before in another video outside of the series on the differences between Shopify and Snipcart, and then the difference between WooCommerce and then Shopify. So Shopify has a couple different features. If you go to their website and go to pricing, it looks like the cheapest option is $30, and that's for a full hosted version with analytics, a blog, customers, orders, the whole works. And that's a great option to get started right away, especially if you want to pick a theme and just use that theme without any customizations at all. But chances are you're not just going to pick a theme and use it exactly how it is. You're going to want to make some customizations, add some of your own images, and instead of hiring another developer to go in and fix that for you and having to find that person and then pay them, we're learning how to do that ourselves with our own website. And there's another option that's actually lower than the $30 version that they don't really advertise that much. And that's at the bottom of the page and that's called Shopify Lite. Shopify Lite has all the same checkout features as the regular Shopify version does, but you have to host it yourself. So in the Zero to Startup in 30 Day course, we learned how to build a website. So we already have our website, it's already hosted, it's already live. We just need to add a buy button so that someone can come to our website, purchase our item, and successfully check out so we can get paid in the future. So that's exactly what the Shopify Lite button does. That also gives us the ability to sell on Facebook. So if we have a Facebook page, a person doesn't even have to leave Facebook to check out. So the difference between Shopify and Shopify Lite is One's hosted and one's not. And since we already have our website built out and we already know enough code to customize it, we only need the Shopify Lite plan. And while it's only a third of the price, it still has a lot of the same features. It still has customers, it still has orders, you can still track inventory, you still have the same exact checkout as you do with Shopify, which is the main feature. So that's all we really care about. And so today we're gonna go through and add the Shopify button to our website I'm gonna go through step by step of how to set up an account, add the button, and start taking some payments from our customers. If you wanna learn all the coding that we learned to get to this point to build out our website to have something to add this buy button to, check out the full course at useful.ly. Let's get to it. So now we're gonna go into how to add a Shopify buy button to our website. Now, if you just go to shopify.com slash pricing, just go to Shopify and then click on the pricing section at the top here, you'll come down to this pricing and you'll see that the lowest price is $29. They don't even advertise Shopify Lite. Um, and for all these options, you can try it three for two weeks. Uh, so it's a great way to just try both Snipcart and Shopify because they both give you a free period. Snipcart, Snipcart is actually longer um, you can pick when you actually start accepting payments, but for today we're going to do Shopify and you can see the basic Shopify site is hosted on Shopify and they have everything from customers, orders, analytics, a blog, and some of those things we don't even need. We already have analytics with Google Analytics. We already have a blog with our simple pages. The only thing we need is payments, so we just need a very simple version. Before we get the Shopify Lite, I want to go over the transaction fees. So no matter what platform you're going to use, you're going to get 2.9% plus 30 cents for credit card transaction fees. This is almost through, this is through 99% of the e-commerce platforms because they're all using the same credit card processor and they all charge the same amount of money. The difference with Shopify is that they have their own payment processor. So instead of say using PayPal or authorized.net or Stripe or any of those above, it would add another 2%. And that's what Snipcart does. So they have their regular 2.9%, these 30 cents, plus 2% to equal 4.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. But with Shopify, if you use the Shopify payments, it's only 2.9%. You can see right here if you're using external payments that uh, it'll cost a little bit extra money. And even you might have to use it in certain countries because I know that in Australia they don't accept the Shopify payment section. Uh, so it all depends on what countries. I just wanted to cover that real quick. And then if we scroll all the way down in this little Shopify light, sell on Facebook and chat with your customers on Messenger, add products to your website, blog. They don't really talk about it too much. It's $9. But 
it is more than enough than what we need. So we're gonna start our free trial. If we scroll down through, we can see you can sell products on Facebook, which is awesome. If you wanna go with the Facebook route, you could connect with customers, you have access to customers, you have access to products, you could accept credit cards in a, in a standalone store, you create invoices. It basically does everything that Shopify, the $30 version does, except for a blog, hosting, and uh, their own analytics. So when you first sign up, it'll take you to this Shopify backend. And this is the backend that you'll see all the orders, all your sales, all your products, orders, Everything you need to know is in the Shopify backend section. And this looks the same whether you're using the buy button, you have the $30 option, the $80 option, or the $300 option. I'm not really sure which one it is. But this all looks the same. And when you first sign up for a free trial, they kind of force you to sign up for the $30 version. Luckily, they haven't charged this yet. So what you're going to want to do is change the sales channel. And you can see here, I already did it. Um, but if you want to do that, you have to do the sales channel. When you first log in, it'll have the online store enabled. So I just removed that and then added the buy button. You could also see a bunch of other um, applications you could use. You could use the point of sale on Facebook. You could use on Amazon, eBay. So there's a lot of add-ons you could use with this Shopify buy button. So in order to change the plan, we're going to go to settings. I'm going to go to account and all the way to compare plans. They make it super difficult because they want you to do the $30 version. So when you finally get here, you're going to have to finally have the option to choose a plan. Now, right now it has a online store enabled for us unless you change the sales channel. So it'll automatically charge you the $30 a month. So even if you have the 14 day period, you're going to want to choose this plan and fill out the credit card details just in case you forget after 14 days because if you don't do this it'll automatically charge you the $30 instead of the $9 per month they make it super annoying to get the $9 version but that's how you do it uh, both even, even if you fill out your credit card details today it'll still charge you on June 20th so this is 14 days from now so you don't have to worry about not having that free period anymore so once you do that, there's I'm going to just show you, go through all the different options. So you'll still have this area right here. Uh, and once you start going live, you'll start seeing some orders, some little suggestions from Shopify about how to make your store better. You can see orders. So no matter what, you have orders back here. We didn't select a pan, plan yet, so it won't show any orders. And then products, we're going to come back to this one. This is where we're going to order our, uh, start our products. So our products can be added back here. So say we start with the Shopify light section and then we decide a couple months down the road, we want to upgrade to the 30 or the $60 version. You could keep the same back end and just enable the different sales channel. So that's pretty awesome as well. And then in products, you have all the inventory, you can do gift cards, although the expensive version has the gift cards. The $30 version doesn't even include gift cards. Uh, customers is available for all the plans. If someone signs up through the email capture, they'll come in here. If someone places an order, they'll automatically become a customer and be able to log in and out to, of the store to see their order. Analytics will only be available if you use the hosted version, discounts is available through all versions, and then apps. So apps is a cool third party section where you could add on different apps. So the reason why I picked Snipcar, which we'll go over tomorrow, is because it requires an extra app to do subscriptions. So if we visit the Shopify store, there's a few free apps that Shopify created. So if you have digital, digital downloads, you can use this version, which is actually developed by Shopify, and it's free. So once you install it, it'll automatically be available in your section to start using. But if we do subscriptions, there's a couple different options, and I've actually used this one before. It does work really well, but then you look at the price, that's another 19 or $20 a month on top of the $30 a month for Shopify or the $9 a month for Shopify. 
So they give you a free trial as well, but it's an extra $20 a month plus transaction fees. So they don't even mention it uh, up front. I know they do because I've used this for a client before. It does work really well. It can cost a lot of extra money. So that's really, really depends on what kind of product you're selling and how you need to deliver that product to your customer in order to pick which one works best for you. So I would just check, take a look at those. There's a lot of add-ons. Uh, there's add-ons for MailChimp. There's mail add-ons for Clavio, which we talked about, two email captures. So there's a lot of things that you get add on, which is not available in Snipcart, which is pretty cool. So now we're gonna create our first product. We're gonna add a product. Just gonna call it coffee. This is coffee. You can track inventory with this item. You just need to give it a number. Shopify tracks the inventory, so you start at one. We don't need to do that just yet. This is a physical product. You could either do physical product, or if you want to do digital downloads, you can just add, do that add-on. We have a physical product. Let's just guess a pound. I'm not really sure. Fulfillment services. This is another add-on section. You could create your own fulfillment sort for service. You could connect to Amazon. UPS, FedEx, or for shipping. So there's a lot of different add-ons and then variants. So if you have, I think a good example is, well, if we have coffee. So if we have two different subscriptions, one for two every two weeks and one for every month. So we have a variant for how often. And then you do one, two weeks, one month and you could give that option to the user. And obviously the the one month version is gonna be, they're gonna be the same price, but it depends on how often they're shipped out. So we're not gonna change the price on those. And if they're different products, you give them different SKUs. So if you have a t-shirt, you have small, medium, large, those are three different variants. If you have a t-shirt that small, medium, large, and black, white, and gray, nine different SKUs, or nine different variants. And then we have our sales channel on button, buy button, so you could manage whether you want it on the online store or just a buy button. So once we have that product, we're gonna do more actions and embed on website. So this is how we add the product to an outside website. If you were to use the Shopify regular version, it would just automatically be added to the Shopify store depending on what theme you used, but we had a little extra work with the Shopify Lite version. So it'll give you a step-by-step -step on how to use this. And then we also have three different options. So if you just want the button and you wanna add the image and the description and the price yourself in the code, you could do that. Or you could just automatically pull everything that we just filled in from Shopify or just the button and the image. So we're just gonna do full image and then copy code. So if you scroll down, so it doesn't actually show you all the code. So if you just do copy code and we go to our code and let's just say we're gonna put it at the bottom. You can see it's a lot of code that they don't actually show you in the little window. But what this is doing, it's pulling in the a little bit of jQuery, it's pulling in some styling and it's pulling in the button. So you can see there's a div, there's a script inside that div which contacts Shopify's code. So just like we in included the jQuery code, it's pulling in that code as well. So when the page loads, it contacts Shopify, gets all the products and fills that in. So we just copy and paste that and then save and then reload the page. Let's scroll down and there's our product. So. We have our two variants of one month, two weeks. We have our price, the title, and our description. And here's our image as well. We only have one image. It has two empty images here. So if we add to the cart, it automatically comes with a cart feature. And then you could check out, which is awesome. 
Now this doesn't work yet because you, in order to start checking out, you have to start paying for it. Even if you, even if it's still the free trial, you can't check out unless you fill in your credit card details and you fill in the bank account details. So you don't want someone to check out, pay, and then nowhere, have nowhere for the money to go. So you have to fill out all that information in the settings section in Damn Good Brew. So in the settings section, you have to fill out the payment providers, check out, if you, if you have shipping, you need shipping. So basically you just fill out all everything that needs to be required for accepting payments and then receiving that payment in whether, whether it's your PayPal account or bank account.